Yankees are off 32. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and end every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve is live on the air every trading day, 11 to 12, Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to just hit newsletters. You're going to see it in the top right-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. And in chat, in fact, we get the Tiger Dollar sale. Check it out. You know, you can get Tiger Dollars. You even get a discount. But the bottom line, it's an outstanding newsletter. Uh, all the different tools that Steve works with every day. Bottom line, you get the newsletter, you're going to get all those tools. And, of course, you've seen that the, the prints that Steve does. It's pretty uh, dramatic uh, each and every day for his clients. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, <laughs> you know, this is the we've entered the favorable seasonal time of the year for football, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. This is when it really ramps up, right? Yes. And if you are a Florida State fan, and I put one and a half kids through Florida State. I, I love they're, it. They're in tears today because, to a certain extent, they got the short end of the stick on Sunday, yesterday at noontime, when they've had got an undefeated season, 14-0. Oh. They're the ACC champs, and they moved from number four to number five in the playoff spot. And Texas, that, and that Texas, means that they're not in the playoffs, right? They're not, they're not, they're not in the big playoffs. I, you know, I was looking at that, man, and, and it was like, th th that's kind of a screwed up uh, way to do this thing, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, which I think they're looking forward to getting next year because you're going to have more teams in playoffs and right. so forth. So it should help to avoid this. But, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's not that Texas is not a good team. They're a great team. You know, they just yeah. happen to have a loss against uh, against Alabama and then Alabama beats Georgia. Right. Uh, you know, it was a field goal it was a three point. It was a field goal that missed really just I think what happened in the game is they scored a field goal. But there was a timeout that was called or something or there was a penalty. And then they went to kick the next field goal and they, it was five yard penalty. And the, it, you know, it, it missed the it missed the upright. So, you know, yeah, pretty crazy out there. But still my favorite time of the year. I just have to console two of my kids. I bet. Uh, you know, because they, they haven't really seen much since. Uh, and if you you've know, ever been in Florida, days. folks, you know, the bottom line, those two big Florida schools, they are competitive beyond belief. And they're yeah, well, look, you, you, USF is it, a great, uh, yeah, a great football oh, team. So yep. UCF has had great football teams, it, it, even down here, at FAU. No, so no it's it, a big it, football state. It, it's amazing. These Florida schools, they start and then they just end up being monsters anyway. I mean, even the they small, are. since I've been down here, just like you said, USF was a small school when I got down here. And I'll, granted, it's 23 years ago. But it's yeah. like, boom, boom, boom. I mean, you 40, know. 40,000 students or so. That's <sighs> wow. big. That's big. Yeah. That's big. That is very big. So last night, I'm going to add, add a little bit of context uh, cool. as well. What I'm seeing here, some of the markets that you were, you were discussing. So last night, right at about 6.53 p.m., gold made that new all-time high. And as you say, it went ahead and sold off. Now, at 6.28 p.m. last night, the U.S. dollar index made a low. And since then, it's rallied. So 25-minute uh, difference here in time, but still important to take a look at. This chart here is looking at the daily correlation between gold and the U.S. dollar. The upper panel of the chart is gold. Uh, center panel is the uh, U.S. dollar index. The bottom panel is the correlation. Now, this is set to a five-day average. And it shows, as we've discussed many times, it has a pretty good direct inverse relationship. Dollar up, gold down. Not to really repeat that commercial on television, but, but yeah, we, we've got that. Now, this is the daily correlation of, uh, of, of price for silver and the U.S. dollar. And we can see that it, too, has got that strong relationship. So let's go check out some of the patterns, see what else was going on last night. In this chart here, if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, what it did was it rallied right into profile resistance and that was at 103.768 for people not familiar with the term profiles if you take a look at my charts here if you watch this on tiger tv on most charts you'll see three horizontal lines those lines represent where buyers and sellers are at the bottom line is where the buyers are located the top line is where the sellers are located oftentimes you'll see a center line and that center line is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that range. In the case of the U.S. dollar index, which is the upper left-hand chart, it's got a bearish structured profile. I mean, there's uh, more sellers that reside between 103.42 and 103.76. So we have the U.S. dollar index testing resistance. And then if we go down to the bottom left-hand panel chart, 
Silver is testing profile support. And that's at 24.897. Now, I took this snapshot maybe about a half an hour ago. I'm not exactly sure nice. where silver is trading right now. But you've got the dollar at resistance and silver at support. And that's something to pay attention to. If we take a look at gold, silver, and the GDX, that's going to confirm a sell the D point pattern today. And what I've got low, uh, uh, identified on these charts here, you can see the A to B equals CD pattern for the GDX. It traded just above the one to one price projection of 3156. Today, we've got a bearish reversal signal, a bearish separating candle. That's how I identify when a top is put in. The, the, the uh, participants in the market will generate bullish, or in this case here, bearish reversal candles. Now, the cool thing here is that the GDX is also forming a new profile. So the level to be watching there is 3046. Not until profile support gets broken can we suggest that there is some type of change in trend. For, for what period of time, we don't necessarily know. But right now, we just have a consolidation of the GDX between the profile levels. So I'd watch 3046. And so that makes also the profile level in silver, which we already covered at 24.89. Key and gold is also attempting to form a new profile. That's the lower right-hand chart. So I'd watch 2023-20. Now I'm using a advanced Doppler tool, Tom, to create these profiles. I'll have confirmation at 6.01 this evening as to whether these profiles have taken hold or not. I know the information is valid. It's just whether or not uh, when the, when the uh, futures reset at night, whether these will take hold or not. My conclusion is that if the U.S. dollar index closes above profile resistance, 103.768, then gold will go ahead and at least target the bottom of that profile, 2023. From a seasonal perspective, when I talk seasonal perspective, folks, I'm referring to the last 55 years. What we've just entered is the short-term unfavorable seasonal cycle. So it says what Tom just said before we came on the air, that he believes that this is just a short-term top. Well, even though Tom didn't probably realize it at the time, it matches up exactly. How do you do that, by the way? It matches up exactly with a 55-year seasonal chart. And that suggests that we should see a bottom right around the 14th. So, folks, if you're, if you're, you know, I know you were talking about the uh, gold report out there. Now is really a great time to be able to get that so that you can try to identify and time that next bottom out there. Now, I don't want anybody to conclude that metals can't rally in the face of a rising dollar. As this monthly chart here shows, the green arrows, you can see that we've got the bottom since 2008 in the U.S. dollar, and gold is trading well above its low from 2008 as well. We also saw a bit of a sell-up in the U.S. indices. In the NQ, you talked about that. That's taking the brunt of it. Turns out, if you take a look at the upper right-hand chart out here, folks, price was pulling back and testing support as well. And that was at 15,748. Not until support gets broken. So watch that 15,748 level overnight. If we do get a close below that, Tom, that says we head to 15,465. But how I would just wrap this up is we've got a move inside the U.S. dollar index that found resistance. Silver found support. The GDX and gold are trading within their profile, so they have not given us a change in trend signal out there. And with regard to the NQ, by the way, the ES Mini is very bullish out here. But with regard to the NQ, we still have to watch that level of support, 15,748. And folks, those profiles that Steve's talking about are crucial because they what ends cool. up happening, like you get a day like day, you think there's a lot of red. But the bottom line is that when it's only going to the bottom of the profile, it doesn't mean a thing, right? I mean, exactly. Just yeah, testing pretty wild. Listen, yeah. man, have a great one, safe one. Thanks, we look Tom. forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Thank Me you. Too. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. You might think.